So welcome back guys to We Talk Boxing and today I'm going to be talking about the fight which took place on the weekend between Jack Catterall and Regis Progre. Now for those that watched the fight on Saturday night it started off a little bit of a chess match or a stinker for some boxing fans. Um, for the first four rounds it wasn't um, a spectacle, it wasn't entertaining, it was quite boring to be honest and... Um, the fight didn't set alight until um, Jack Catterall accidentally slipped and he got scored a knockdown. But from that fourth round onwards, for me anyway, the fight was only heading in one direction. Um, and that was in the direction of Jack Catterall. Um, you can see that Catterall was very, very, very hesitant in the first few rounds of the fight because... The first few rounds of the fight is generally when Regis Progre is very um, strong and he, you know what I mean, he's very elusive and he, if he hits you with his left hand, he's going to cause some damage. So every time Regis Progre was trying to bridge the gap or try and let his hands go, Catterall wasn't having it. He was gone. He was, he was nowhere to be seen sort of thing. And he was having, he was letting, sorry, Regis Progre having to reset and it just put Regis Progre off his game and he just couldn't get settled in the fight. And that's exactly what Jack Catterall and his team wanted. They wanted to frustrate uh, Regis Progre and they did that. And as I said, the fight didn't really set a light until the fourth round where... I'm sure it was fourth or fifth round where Jack Catterall went down. It was more of a slip rather than a, a punch that hurt him and put him down. Uh, but it got scored anyway. You touch the canvas, you get, you get scored as a knockdown. So automatically that was a 10-8 round. Um, and then from there, as I said, Catterall came into his own. He was letting his hands go a little bit, a bit more. He was pressing. He was pressing um, Regis Progre. He was having. He was making him work. And as he was making him work, and he was catching Regis Progre, Progre had no choice but to try and let his hands go. And as he was letting his hands go, um, Catterall wasn't there. Then obviously he was come back in. He was bridging the gap. Quick feet, one two, and then he was putting him off and. It was a it was a decent fight from the from the um, fifth fourth fifth round onwards to be honest and Pro Gray eventually went down twice I should say in the ninth round automatically making that a ten seven round um, and to be honest I kind of felt as if if there was a little bit longer on the clock that maybe Catterall could have probably have got a stoppage but um, Pro Gray did very well to come back in the tenth round he didn't do nothing special but he he done well to um to obviously let his hands go and not let the referee um stop the fight but yeah good performance um from jack catterall he now goes on now in terms of him moving forward there's big talk now in terms of him going on and hopefully potentially fighting for a world title in his next fight which he fully deserves by the way because he should be a world champion or should have been a world champion i should say because he did beat Josh Taylor for all the belts, but just wasn't given a decision. And then he fought him recently, obviously beat him, and but there's no belts in the line. So he should and he deserves to have a world title shot next. But whether or not that comes, it should come because he's got Eddie Hearn in his corner. Um, and knowing Eddie Hearn, I feel as if he will make things happen for, for Jack Catterall. The only thing that I'm a bit... Hit, like iffy about is who it will be there's talk about obviously Teofimo Lopez there's talk about Liam Paro but Paro's got a fight coming up against Richard Hitch Hitchens um, that's ne this month I think yeah November um, so yeah he's got that fight with um, Richard Hitch Hitchinson or whatever his name is um, and then you've got the vacant WBC belt I think or like currently um, and then you've got the WBA champion Joss Venezuela so, yeah, there's a couple of options there, but certainly he deserves that. Now, you know what I mean? Can he go on to potentially try and clean up the 140 pound division? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, obviously, there's good fighters in that at that division. You've got Teofimo Lopez, even though there's talk about him moving up to the 147. You've got Josh Taylor still. Obviously, he's fought him twice and obviously beat him once, lost once. Um, 
He's obviously beat the other big name in the division in terms of um, Regis Progre. Um, you've also got uh, Matias still in there as well. So again, he would like to probably have a say in that division as well, which <laughs> which would be pretty decent. You've got the Japanese fighter as well. Is it Hiroki or something like that? Um, he looks decent. He looks very good. Um, and they were talking about him and Jack doing some sparring not long ago as well. So that's a potential good fight. And then... Depending on what happens with Ryan Garcia, you've got the Ryan Garcia. Um, if he stays at 140 or if he moves up, who knows? And obviously, you've got Devin Haney as well, who's in and around that weight category as well. So, yeah, some good fighters there, some good potential fights. I do feel that Catterall has the potential to try and clean up that division. Um, and it'd be good to see if he can do that. I like Jack Catterall. Um, he's got good skills and he's awkward for fighters. And that's the thing that potentially is going to take him a long way in, in, the, in the boxing game. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below, people. How, you know what I mean? How, how, like, what did you think of the fight? Um, and who would you like Jack to fight next? Which champion? As always, please subscribe and comment. Bless.